God is in this house. He is fighting our battles. What a joy to know the Lord is here. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. Such a joy to see each one of you this morning here. And uh, what a joy to see, um, you know, new faces, people who have already members. You know, I always mention this. I never take anybody's presence here for granted. You might be a member of our church for the last 19 years or a uh, member of our church for the last five years or two years, or you're just attending for the very first Sunday, I'd never take your presence for granted because you had the choice of being anywhere else, but you choose to be here knowing that this is the house of the Lord, knowing that God is the shepherd, the chief cornerstone, and among upon him we find ourselves. And I'm so thankful to see each one of you this morning. May the, I pray that may the Lord continue to bless and be with us and strengthen us and lead us. And in every walk of our life, I pray that the Lord's hand of mercy, the Lord's hand of empowerment, the Lord's hand of grace will be over your life, your work, your school, and uh, in the life of your family, in whatever you do. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless and prosper you. Once again, good to see your smiling faces. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. And I always mention this, you know. I want the devil to know there's a group of people. You put them in fiery furnace. They will not keep quiet. Let them go through the deepest waters. They will not keep quiet. Or you bring Red Sea, it's totally fine. They're about to go through. You bring Jordan, it's totally fine. They're about to go. But they will not have a frown on their face. They will have a smiling face. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let that be the strength of your life. Thank you, Ben. Let that be the strength of your life. Let that be the strength of your family. Let that be the strength in your life this season. I know stuff happens, life happens, but in all of those given situations, I pray that the hand of our gracious God will be with you. Y'all happy? Amen. Santosh Mahi Rikindalo? Stotram. Hallelujah. They were sending the deal. We need more. You know, to see anybody, everybody together is such a joy. And as we move forward, this morning, uh, real quick, as, um, I want to go into a little bit of teaching today. And as we do that, I want everybody to pay attention, no distractions, uh, in, you know, as we focus on the scriptures. Let's look into the aspect of uh, this, the part five of uh, the frequency series that I've been doing. It's about hearing God in, in, in live situations. In, we will have situations of all kind, but in every given situation, how can you and me tune in to hear God so that he gives us the guidance, he gives us the access, he paves the path for us, and we walk behind him hearing God is the one who is leading us. Many years ago, um, you know, um, you know, part of my uh, scouts camp, uh, they took us to um, a, a forest area. And while they did so, uh, you know, I was, uh, I think I was in my seventh grade. And when they did so, it was the forest area in Bangalore. And they, when they did so, it was, uh, we went behind our guide. And because we were going behind our guide, we followed the same path the guide was taking. So the guide knew the entire space and place. Uh, he's already been there in the forest like many times. And he's already taken a lot of teams with him. So he knows the route. Amen. He knows the place. He knows the space that he's working and all we have to do was walk behind him. Walk behind the guide who was actually taking us in these places. And you know, we could go there with confidence knowing that this is a jungle where there are ferocious, wild animals. But still we have this confidence, not on our own understanding, but in the guide who was taking us. Are you trying to understand this? The guide who was taking us in this forest, he knows the place. He is been there he's gone through stuff he knows where at what time what will happen and because he knows under the confidence of this guide we were following him and in life we have to understand oftentimes that life gives us confidence or knowing that uh, you know we are following not on our understanding but we are following in the understanding of who Christ has revealed himself into our life in what ways Christ has revealed himself in our life in what ways for some of the for some of us God has revealed himself as a real estate agent for some of us God has revealed himself as a healer for some of us, God has revealed himself as a manager of an organization where through God, 
He has hired you. So there are different forms and different ways where God has actually revealed his power into our life, which has made us that I can be confident in this aspect of my life because I know God has let me. Is that your story this morning here? Is that your story? Because, in, you know, most of the time I come across people who come and ask me for prayers and they say, Pastor, I'm going through this examination of this season as this job interview and these are the stuff and struggles that I'm going through. I need your prayer. And when we pray, God answers to you in that given situation. And for you, God has revealed himself through those prayers and you are now confident in that area of your life in God. But what about other situations? What about something else that you have not tasted? Something else that you have never gone through? Something else that you have never come across? What about if tomorrow in America there is going to be a great persecution that breaks out to all of our folks here? What are we going to do? We hear about persecution. We hear the stories of persecution that is going on. Even recently, I was going through uh, 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 some of my friends and they were sharing about the struggles they were facing where they are ministering in different parts. of. I would say we are privileged here, but what if there's going to be a serious persecution that is happening in our country, in Richardson, maybe starting tomorrow or maybe starting right now. How do we process through that in a given situation where you don't know how to handle how can you tune in to hear God in those given situations and today I want to title my message as don't throw away your confidence don't throw your confidence away I want to title my message as don't throw your confidence away some of us are really confident in things. And some of us are not at all sure of things. I mean, one of the things that people, in statistically, there are two kinds of fear. One is the fear of public speaking. I put somebody on spot right now over here. I know that some of your knees will have fellowship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, I don't have to put you here. Only that I have to do is, brother, can you please pray? I know some of our brother's name. It's coming in my mind. Some of our sisters, you know... Uh, we are not confident in that area. What happens is because we are not confident, when we are put in spot, we are nervous, we are filled with anxious because we don't know what to do in those given scenarios and life situations. And we go through those situations. Following Christ, somebody, you know, many years ago in my ministry back in Bangalore, one sister came to me and she said, Pastor, I have left all those idols and I'm following Jesus. I asked her, why do you decide to do that? And like you said, Jesus, in, when you come to Jesus, there's no problem. I said, no, sister, when you follow Christ, there's going to be more problems in your life. Are you trying to understand this? Is that true? Is that true? Come, it is. As you grow in life, you will understand. Right now, you don't, boy. You don't. But that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Because when you follow Christ, every enemy, oh come on, can I tell you, when you decide to follow Christ, you are the most wanted person in heaven. Oh no, 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 in hell. You are on the hell's hit list when you decide to walk in the footsteps of our guide, our savior, our Lord Almighty. And that's the story of Bible. And this sister, she was filled with joy. She's like, Pastor, I know I will have no problem. I know God is a God of rescue. He will rescue you. He will heal you. He will be on your side. But at the same time, you're going to go through struggles. She went back home. She accepted Jesus. She went back home. And thankfully, I had encouraged her that you will have to struggle. She went back home. And there was a big fight that broke family because she came to church to pray her husband put her outside her house and there was so much for three days she could not even walk into that house I'm like okay guy maybe the husband knew how to cook food so he could easily put his wife outside that's kind of a joke you are not laughing but it's okay <laughs> but but the real story is this lady had to go through real life struggles from the day she accepted Jesus Christ as her many of us you don't know you don't understand I know people personally in our city who comes for prayer and fellowship once in a while to our homes but they cannot boldly confess that in their home situations I know people who come to us for prayer. I know people, in, even right now, we were talking recently to a person. And, you know, she, uh, you know the person, you know, uh, goes through the, her scriptures during the midnight so that her family doesn't understand, doesn't know. Why? Because she's scared. I mean, there are going to be struggles the moment you accept 
Jesus Christ. The, the following Christ is never going to be easy. Never going to be easy. People will always have a problem the moment you have accepted Jesus. The moment they see some sort of changes in your life. And Christ deliberately brings those changes in our looks, in our appearance. The way we talk. You cannot talk the way you used to talk. Like, no, I can't do that. Why? Because now I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When the blind man opened his eyes, he started seeing. Everybody around him had a problem. Why? Because he now, right now he sees. He opened his eyes. He looks at hundreds of eyes that are staring him to death. That's what happens. That's what happens. When your inner eyes open up and you see around, there's always going to be a cloud of witnesses around you that is trying to put you down because they don't like the way you worship God. They don't like the way you proclaim. They don't like the way you walk in faith. They don't like the way you do your Christian life and people will be against you. But in those given situations, don't throw your confidence away. Some of us, we have already thrown our confidence away because of the situations that have arisen in our life. Maybe you failed in one of the exam and you're like, I can't do this course at all. Maybe you couldn't turn. That's your mistake, boy. That's your mistake, girl. You couldn't turn in your assignment on time. You're like, I can't do this program at all. No. No. Don't throw your confidence away. Just because you had to go through one failure. No. You are victorious through Christ who strengthens you. He is on your side. He, the, the, the problem with our churches, the problem with our generation is that it's not the problem about confidence. It's the problem that we put our confidence on wrong places. I mean, the mo more you put confidence on having a self-confidence, being self-confident about things is really good. But you can't do that all the time. Is that true? You got to be confident on something else. Who is the source of your confidence? The problem with us is we put our confidence in something that is sinking sand. Something that is not everlasting. We put our confidence on people, but people may fail you. You put your confidence on your own ability and understand. What if next week you have fever? Oh, come on. I want to see your strength right there. Maybe sometimes you may be going through suffering, but can I tell you something? It's, it's something that I enjoy the most. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for the night. But joy comes in the morning. And my God is a God who changes situations around. And as we read the story, we understand. Sometimes you are publicly exposed to insult. Do you feel good if you're exposed? How good you feel when you're exposed of what you were doing and what are the things you have messed up with. And if you're publicly exposed, how are you going to take it? Are you trying to understand this? It's all in the Bible. My Bible says it. I don't know about your Bible. Read it, okay? So it says, sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and great persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. 34, you suffered along and those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourself had better and lasting possessions in this world. And that is the story of a Christian faith. What makes you different from any other faith out in the world is that you have a confidence that anything and everything that you have, you possess, you have right now will walk out of your life tomorrow. But there is something that is eternal. There is something that the world cannot take away. There is something that the enemy cannot take away. It is eternal promise of being one with God. And that is what the writer to Hebrews is mentioning to us. You all understanding this? You may have wealth today, tomorrow it's gone. You may have kids around you today, tomorrow it may be gone. But whatever happens in your life situation, you must have a confidence in the one who has called you and kept you and leading you that my tomorrow is in the hands of God Almighty. I have a confidence. My confidence is now placed in the wrong places. It is on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. 
Hallelujah. That is the difference between us and any worldly person. Any worldly person that we may come across. I call them worldly because of their worldly behaviors. The carnal nature. The carnal nature. And I pray among us there will be none that has this carnal nature that is living inside of us. Because you have to understand this both cannot take your heart. This bo- both of these cannot take your life. You're either a child of God and you have a confidence in your maker or you are not. There is nothing in between. There is no Christian life in between. You can't live an in-between Christian life. Either you are a child of God or you walk out and do whatever you want to do. My confidence is on Christ. My confidence is on Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. He is my guide. And behind him, I have the freedom to walk. I know that where my shepherd leads, I have the confidence. Let's read. I want to bring your attention towards a person who had gone through great pressure in his life and his confidence was tested. You have to understand pressure is a good thing. Amen. If you, yesterday in our, um, you know, we, we restarted our, for the others who are attending right now, we, the parents too, we, re, we restarted our small groups for 2019 from yesterday night. And we want to keep it very intentional Bible study. Please bring your kids on Saturday night. Uh, you know, you all have worship here, but we want to spend some intentional time of Bible study devoted on Saturday nights just to teach them, be with them. And I'm so thankful that Brother Anish and Sharon, uh, Sean and uh, 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 Roshni, all of them are helping us in this because one of the things that we I understand is we need to be very transparent with our lives so that the others can follow us. And I pray the most of us will find areas where you can be a mentor to somebody. Otherwise, our Christian life is of no use. If we just come here, spend three hours and walk out of there, there's no use. Be a mentor to somebody so that they can accept and walk in the grace of Jesus Christ. I want to bring your attention towards a person who had to go through great pressure in his life. Pressure is a good thing. Pressure is a good thing. Last week, I took my car to discount tires because one of my tires was having a very low pressure. And I took, and there was this light thing that came up. And he, I mean, I was driving it for almost two or three weeks with the light thing on. And I took it to the discount tires. And this guy, he was checking all this thing and he checked for the nail and stuff. And he said, uh, 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 sir, you know, one of your tires is low pressure. And uh, uh, there's another tire that has high pressure. And he said, the low pressure is also dangerous. The high pressure is also so dangerous because in both the given scenarios your tire can pop out any moment it can burn out it can burst out at any moment so you have to be very careful of those given situations I see some signals going here and there. I believe it's a family thing, maybe. <laughs> Somebody relates with me, I guess. You know, I mean, I, I took it for a while to take it to the place. Uh, 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 thankfully, nothing happened. But what I'm trying to share here is, because of the given situation, I understood a principle that, you know, if you have no pressure at all in the tires, after 2007, there was a system that uh, most of the tire manufacturing companies or car, it was... I think Sony Uncle might know better uh, automobile stuff. I think it is TMFS or something like that, where the t- it's, it's kind of you know, a facility where you understand the actual pressure of your car. What happens is when, when you have low pressure, your vehicle cannot move, or you may have collision, or your, or your tires may, may break out. Or if you have higher pressure, pressure in your tire that is a problem too so what happens is this this mechanism in your in your vehicle makes you understand that there should be a right amount of pressure in all of your tires i don't know the what the right amount i believe it is 36 or 38 if you know the right amount please uh, uh keep it that way but i think it is 36 or 33 or you know uh, please talk to our 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 our, our you know, sony uncle you know right after our service if that's the case but what i'm trying to share is you got to have the right pressure for you to have a move movement and most of us we don't like pressure in recently i came across somebody who was like you know i got a new job but there is so much pressure so much come on with promotion comes pressure 
Do you talk about pressure when you get the paycheck? No. Oh, it's so good. I love to have a paycheck. It's so good. But the next week, when Monday morning, when you have to wake up and you have to go to work and look through all the papers and files, you're like, so much pressure. With promotion comes responsibility. With responsibility comes pressure. Pressure. You need to have certain level of pressure in your life for your life to continue, progress, and move forward. Don't run away from pressures. Let me bring your attention towards a person. Matthew chapter 26. He's my, the most famous character in the entire Bible. He is Jesus. And Matthew chapter 26, verse 36 to 46. When we look into that scripture, we understand. Let's read it. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Let's pause for a moment. Pay your attention real quick here. Bible mentions that Jesus said, Lord, if it is your will, so let... Where is my cup? All right. Jesus said, let this cup pass away. Let this cup... Time break. Let this cup pass away. If it is your will. What, what is that cup in that context talking about? You have to understand in, the, in, in Jesus' time, in Bible times, kings were assassinated when their cup were actually poisoned. And that's why you see when Nehemiah walked in front of his king, his king saw the face of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was who? He was the, the cup bearer. For the king. So the cupbearer walked in front of the king. And the cupbearer Nehemiah's face was downcast and worried. That kind of crea created a cautious mentality in the king. Because he wanted to make sure that the cup that Nehemiah gives is not filled with poison. Are you trying to understand this? So cupbearer had a huge role in Bible times. Because it was the cupbearers who had direct Close access to the king. If they wanted, they can assassinate, they can kill the king with a poison. Can I tell you something real quick? My Jesus, even after he knew his cup was filled with poison, he readily chose to drink it down. Why? Because he said, Father, not my will, but let yours be done. My flesh may say, I can't, but I want to declare, Lord, when flesh is weak when I come under pressure I want to say God I will let never let my confidence away in things around my confidence is found only in God and Jesus even after he knew that his cup was filled with the poisonous sins of every person that walked on the face of the earth he said Lord if it is only your will I am ready to take it are you trying to understand does it make sense does it make sense and Bible says, Jesus said, my cup overflows. Why could your cup overflow with joy? Why is your cup overflowing with blessings? Why is your cup overflowing with the peace of God? It's because there was somebody in the garden of Gethsemane who said, God, if only your will says, I am ready to take this cup so that somebody else may have a cup of overflowing blessings and peace and joy. In the, he was just seeing us. That is the beauty of gets the God. What Eden lost, gets the many gained. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. I gave you 30 seconds to praise right now. What Eden lost. Gets the many gained. Why? When what first Adam could not achieve, the second Adam, who is Christ Jesus Christ, he said, I am ready to go through this because of my God, who is the confidant of my life. He is my confidence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Here's the confidence of my life. I am going to struggle. It's okay. I can go to Red Sea. It's okay. I'm going to join. It's fine. People may stand with me or may not stand with me, but that's totally fine. My confidence is not on people. My confidence is on Jesus Christ. My Redeemer. My everlasting hope in whom I find my life. But here, let's look, let's look real quick. Um, as we look into this aspect, we have to that the measure of a man is not how he acts when things go smoothly, but when and how when he is challenged. The measure of a man is not things go smoothly. You're really good boys. You're really good people. When the boat had no storm around it, you had so much peace and you can sing the song. Akkadekyo yatra chayyum siyon sanjari. Oh, all angal sherikyo na vamnu gainyal. Praise the Lord. I remember all these stories because it's funny. Uh, people give me a lot of stories to preach. You know, so when you are around me, you invite me to your house. Be very careful. I am watching every move. Many years ago, we went for a church picnic. Um, when we were going, when we were going, everybody started singing. You know, they were having this competition, right? You know, A and Team B. They sing this songs and they have this competition. Everybody singing, and uh, all of a sudden, this is funny. I remember some of these stories. All of a sudden, you know, there was this song that everybody started singing. Akkareku yatra you more. And they were singing and it was a good song. They were worshiping. They were praising. You know, it was a good song. It was going. All of a sudden, the driver jammed his brake and put a hard brake. Ah. It was not a peaceful situation at all in the entire bus. Why? Because that mo moment, they lost their confidence. They were just singing because everybody else was singing. But when real life challenges hit, Peter came and said, Jesus, you are sleeping in this, how can you sleep? Come on. Maybe this is what your roommates might tell you. Ben, how can you sleep when so much is happening around us? I'm sorry. How can you? My confidence is on Jesus. It's on Jesus. You know who upon whom you have confidence? Do you know where you have put your confidence? If it is on any other person other than Jesus Christ, you will always have trouble and despaired moments. Moments. But if your confidence is on Jesus, the eternal rock of our life, he says, I boldly took the cup, drank it, knowing that some of you will have a cup filled and overflowing with joy, peace, and goodness. So that you may have life and life in abundance. Why? Because I love you. And that is the message of Gethsemane. When Jesus, under the greatest pressure that he had to go through, he did not allow the pressure to succumb him, but he allowed great power to be revealed in pressured moments. You go through pressured moments all the time. You can make sure a power of God is revealed in those given scenarios. But here, when we look into those aspects, when we read that portion, I want to bring your attention towards the next portion that it would say, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then return to his disciples and found them sleeping. Oh, no wonder why I have people in church who sleep. Praise the Lord. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them. What? Oh, come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, please don't sleep. In a smiling face, please look into them and say, please don't sleep. 
when he came back, he again, turn your attention here, when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Three times, Jesus had to go to the father and ask the father, father, I am going through the pressure of world. I am going through a struggle. Just imagine, just imagine if, think about it. The entire weight of earth is now resting on the head of Jesus Christ. The entire weight of every human being that walked on planet earth is resting on the head of Jesus Christ. That is painful. He had to take it. And that's why he said, Lord, if you can, three times. I want to give you attention, bring your attention towards four valuable truths that you got to know understanding the scriptures. Is that okay? For the people who are writing down four valuable truths that you have to understand through these scriptures here. Number one, you have to understand is that my God is a God who reveals his thing concerning your life before. You know, sometimes, you know, if I put you on spot, you have fear that is engulfing you. But if you have, if I have given you an advance notice of what is going to happen or a rundown of the event and where at what time you come on stage, you have already prepared your mind. What is it? It's about the preview before the main viewing is done. Are you trying to understand? It's about the preview before the main premiere that opens up. It's a preview of what is about to happen. And my God is a God of prophetic declarations about our life. Most of us here, we have heard some sort of promises in our life. Is that true? Promises concerning the future of our life. And we hold on to these promises for Paul when he was in the shipwreck. What was the promise he was holding on to? Because the angel of the Lord appeared. And what did the angel say? Tomorrow, this time, you will face you will be in row and 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 that promise made paul to go through what he had to go through can i tell you in the old testament we know the story of abraham but Ab you have you have to understand abraham was shopping for dentures and diapers at the same time at the closest serious why because he had to wait after the preview of a prophetic promise in his life are you trying to understand this praise the lord hallelujah he had to wait as he was preparing for baby Isaac to be born. But he was very old. That all his teeth may be falling off. He had to wait for 25 long years. For Joseph from pit to prison to palace. He had to wait right after he heard his promise. For some of us it may be the next day you will see the unfolding of the promise. But most of the cases God prepares you in the waiting period. Everybody loves having an open door, right? We pray that God will open a mighty door for us. But can I tell you something? From where I am to where the door is, there is a place of transition. Nobody knows. I have to walk this distance. Yes, the door is open, but I got to walk this distance to get there. And I have to know one thing. My God has revealed the open door for me. But in the preview and until the premiere of what God has unfolded into my life, I need to walk in faith. I need to walk under pressure because my God is faithful. He will never leave you. For Abraham, as he was worried... God is a God of fulfilling promises. His, his word never changes. People may change. God's word is authentic, invaluable truth that builds our life. It is the foundation of our life and he holds our world together. His word holds our world together. His word holds. Is your world shattered? Is your world broken? It's your world that you look, your world is an unsettled way. You have to understand the word of God builds your world. The story in the Bible is the story 
that we understand that in the moment of pressured situations that Jesus was going through, Bible mentions the angel of the Lord up here. Number one is the preview. God gives you a preview so that you can still have a confidence in God. God gives you a preview, a prophetic word, a promise in your life so that you will have the confidence built on Christ Jesus. Number two that I want to mention here is the place. As you read the story here, you understand that then Jesus... Verse 36, when Je then Jesus went with his disciples to a place, to a place. And the place was called Gethsemane, Gethsemane, the place is called Gethsemane. And Jesus went to the place, it's about the place. Praise the Lord, it's about the place. And in, um, you know, when you read that, you, you see um, Luke chapter 22 Verse 39 to 42, if you're writing down these scriptures, please write it down. I'm bringing your truth right behind, behind these scriptures here. Luke chapter 22, verse 39 to 42 explains the story. Then Jesus went out with them to a place called Gethsemane, that is in Matthew. But in Luke, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. I wanted to underline, mark the word, highlight the word as usual as usual you can't just get to one place and say god please show up a place of confidence comes with if you are familiar with the place if you know the place many years ago um, i was i was in my ninth grade i was in my ninth grade and I, they invited me to speak at a conference. It was a, it was a big conference and uh, when I was speaking, but it was a very new avenue. And this was the first time I was facing a crowd of thus large, you know, could be around six, 7,000 members. And as I was, I was saying that ninth grader and I'm speaking at a huge place. Before that, I spoke at house cottage meetings, a small meeting, church me. But this was a larger place. I didn't have confidence about this place at all. I asked some of my achachans at that time and I said to them, you know what? Uh, uh, I don't feel very confident about this place. Can you, can you take me to the venue in the night, the day before I am speaking. Are you trying to understand? So that I am familiar with the place. I know how is it going. Are you trying to understand this? You know, even, even now, sometimes what I do is before I make, you know, a preaching engagement anywhere, I try to find out the logistics, the background, the people around, so that it gives me confidence about the situation that I am in. And Jesus did not just stumble and get into the place, the garden of Gethsemane. But Bible says he went to the Mount of Olives as usual. He's been doing that for a while. And this is what my message is. Some of us have a 911 relationship with God. You call God only in times of trouble, which is good. He is a constant help in all troubles we go through. But apart from 911 relationship, where you think about God, only when a trouble comes, only when a struggle comes, only when you go through tempest and storm, you got to have Psalm 91 one relationship with God. What does Psalm 91 one say? He who dwells in the shelter of Most High will find refuge. If you dwell, you will find I need to maintain my life that I'm seen in the house of the Lord quite often. This is my place. When I mention about place, Zion Church, 1620 East Arapaho, not just this or your physical address, location. No, you and me need to be a person who's constantly walking in the presence of God, a person constantly walking in the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Please, hallelujah. I want you to be really excited when I preach this message because I know there's a truth behind it. My confidence does not come from people outside. My confidence is built on Jesus Christ. Number two that I mention is the place. Place is important. Place is important for you to hear. Praise the Lord. When I am speaking my message here, you stand out on the street. Can you hear me? No. Why? Because our PA system cannot blast out the audio, audio uh, uh, vocals to make you hear. Maybe, I don't know. You can't. You can't know what is going on. Place is important for you to tune in to the frequency of heaven. Where are you situated? Where are you situated today in your journey, in your life, in your place? Where are you?
to engulf them. Where are you situated? God asks you to walk back to the place of hearing Him. God asks you to come back to a place as usual. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Why? He knew one day I had to change the verdict of Eden. It can happen only in Gethsemane. And I know as I am engulfed in a time of confident time of prayer and being in the presence of God, my confidence doesn't come from the people that back me up. They come with me, but they will sleep. I know my confidence is built on Jesus. My confidence is built on God himself. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of us are going through struggles. You don't know how to overcome it because your confidence is on wrong places. You don't have a preview. You don't have a preview of your promise. Maybe you have heard it, but you forgot about it. You've forgotten your place, the place of usual meeting with God. You forgot your place, come back. Spend time in the presence of God. Have Him be your constant support. Jesus had to go through the poison of our life. Understand the value. Understand the value. Even after knowing my king was ready to take the cup. Why? So that you and me can have a cup flowing with goodness and mercy. So that we can be in a better place. A place flowing with milk and honey. An eternal life. Why? My master had to go through the cup of poison. No king will ever do it. But my king gave his life away. My king put his life down. Because in his sight, all he was thinking about was me. Was me. Three is people. Number one, preview. Number two, the place. Three is the people. When pressure is greater, make your circle smaller. Are you trying to understand? When your pressure is greater, make your circle smaller. Who is that person that you call when you go through, coming back to Ben again. Who is the, I'm sorry, okay? But you're a good person. I like to talk to you. All of you guys. Who is that first person that you dial when you are in the deepest, don't tell me your dad, but somebody else, your best friend, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. But you, who is that person that comes to your mind that you dial and you call when you are going through the deepest pressure of your life? Pressure accelerates your life. You have to understand in those given moments, about people. Let's look into that aspect. When Jesus took his disciples. How many disciples? Huh? Three. But he took the entire group with him. To the garden. And he said. Y'all rest here. But out of you three. Or out of all of you. Three of you. Come with me. Let's go. Let's go. I know all of them came. But out of all of them. Jesus chose Peter, James, and John, the sons of Zebedee and Peter. Three people who walked with Jesus to little more, you have to read your Bible, little more farther place and Jesus went with them. They were the others. They were the others. But Jesus could not take all of them because their frequency is on a different level. Hallelujah. They cannot understand what Jesus might go through. They've been with Jesus all this time. They've been with Jesus seeing all the miraculous and wondrous work. They love the popularity and, and, and the places that Jesus might go through. But when Jesus got to a place of great pressure, he had to bring his circle closer and smaller. It's a very interesting truth sometimes. When you're going through struggles in your life, don't be a loud broadcast and make everybody hear what you're going through. Choose your people wisely. Not everybody around you who hears the suffering and the struggle you're going through are there to help you. They will use the same situation where life changes around. You need to pick your three people, two people, maybe one person. You need to pick your, you need to make your circle smaller when your pressure is mounted up large. Does that, does that talk sense to us? 
Jesus had to bring his circle closure. Just three people. Just three people. Number four is power. This is how I understand. God will never put you in a place where your trust and your power relies upon people. Why did disciples sleep? They were tired and they are human. They will do what normal humans will do. And the Bible explains us, they slept. Why? Because their eyes were heavy. Their eyes were heavy. And they slept. Praise the Lord. Somebody, you know, uh, again, stories from a pastoral life, right? Many years ago, somebody was telling, Pastor, I don't mind sleeping in church. Why? Because in the Bible too, one fellow slept. And Paul raised him up. So even if I sleep and die at church, I will raise up again. <laughs> Wife came back and said, Pastor, that is the most dangerous place to die. Let him die at home. I'm kidding. But here, the power. God will never put you in a place where you trust on people around you. Disciples slept. Even the three closest people that Jesus counted. Can I have the worship behind me? The three closest people that Jesus counted in. They slept. Why? Their eyes were heavy. Don't worry. When you see the people. Orangate. Nitya Deva Telana. Israel in the Devam. Avanurunangela. He never sleeps nor slumbers. Sotram. Hallelujah. He doesn't sleep nor slumbers. I trust in my God. I trust in my God. He will never put you in a place where your trust is on people. People change, life changes. But here we see God said, God, until the last breath of my life, until the last breath of my life, my confidence. It's not on the place that I am in. The, my confidence is not on what people have said. My confidence is not on the power of people. But I know one thing, God, that my, in my given situations, great power is released when I am going through the pressure of my life. I don't throw my confidence away just because I am in a great struggle of pressure. Some of you are going through that struggle today. I believe maybe today, right now, but I can tell you some, give you this assurance. Put your trust in God. He is the author and the finisher of our Can you all stand up in God's house? It's a good moment. The worship is sounding very heavenly right now. Justin looks amazing on that keys and he's playing a heavenly music. But right now as he does though, I want us to understand, I want us to understand how we thrown our confidence away the things that people say you cannot do it. Can I tell you? Bring your confidence back. Because through Christ, you can. Good news. Good news. Good news. The place of knowing God. Can I tell you something? Quick here. Three Hebrew boys were thrown in fire. Great pressure. Great pressure. You know what? They confidently looked at the king and they said, My God will rescue me. Mm. Even if my God does not rescue me, I know who I am. That is the confidence that any Christian should, I may go through persecution, a struggle or oppression of the devil, but I know one thing, my God delivers me. Even if my God does not show up, I know that when I close my eyes on earth, I open my eyes in eternity, being with my maker. My Savior. Come on, church. This is a moment for us to recognize the power of relying and having confidence built on Christ Jesus. Look to the Lord right now. Every person, every person. This moment, this person, this moment, this moment, this person. As we the greatest pressures, we say, God, you control my life. God, you lead my life.